What's up guys? It's Matt with Galaxy Games 843. We're back with another video. This time we're working on a Miss Pac-Man cocktail machine. Uh, we picked this one up for a pretty good price. And the reason why we got such a good price on it is because, of course, it's not working. So we're going to take a look and see what's going on. It definitely needs a really good cleaning. Um, maybe a little bit of body work. We'll see. Um, we might be able to just clean it up and make it look nice. Probably replace the T-molding on it. Uh, maybe a little bit of paint here and there. Um, but otherwise... Before we do anything cosmetic, we, what we want to do is we want to spend our time working on the electronics and getting things working. So let's plug it in and let's see what happens. I'm told the screen isn't working, but I'm told the game works, but we'll see here. All right, first thing I can hear is I can hear the coin counter clicking. You got, does everyone hear that? That's not a good sign. That's usually an, an, an issue with the board. Of course, there's nothing happening on the screen, so don't worry about that. We're not even going to show that right now. Let's do it. Let's open this up. Now, it's going to set off the kill switch, so we'll have to re restart that. All right, so let's go ahead and pull the switch. Let's see if we can see what's happening here. Can't get the camera to focus on that. So, as we were saying, that's obviously not a good sign. So something is happening there. All right, so the coin counter is just counting up. That's obviously not working the way it's supposed to. Um, we can't do anything to coin it up. If we hit the coin switches, nothing happens. It should be on free play, but if I press the uh, start button, we don't get any action. And of course, there's nothing on the screen right now because the screen's dead. So let's open this thing up and take a look inside and let's see if we can see anything that kind of stands out. All right, so we got the cabinet opened up um, and of course things look pretty dirty. So that PCB probably needs a good cleaning. The new edge connector probably needs cleaned. Um, I'm sure you've watched our previous video where we did a switching power supply in a Pac-Man. That same trick will work in this cabinet. i um, not sure if we're going to go that route yet. Um, first thing off the, off the bat though, it certainly needs cleaned. Um, it needs the control panel overlays replaced. As you can see, those are just either gone or in really bad shape. And the monitor, the circuit board there is either, either going to need rebuilt or replaced. Now I just happen to have... A few things on hand too. So first of all, I've had these in my art container, my arcade art container for a while. So these are replacement control panel overlays. So they'll go right on. Well, actually, this one will go on this side with the one and two player buttons like that. Um, so those are good. That's going to replace that side. This one will go on that side. So that's good to go there. I also had. I know this is kind of tough to see here. I also have this, and this is a rebuilt, supposedly not by me, but by a buddy of mine, a rebuilt Electro Home Geo 7 chassis. Um, it's got new caps for sure. You know, it's it looks pretty good. Um, so we're probably going to try that out. It says the B plus is good. It's got the curl kit done on it. Um, it looks like it was recapped back in 2017 and it's been in the box ever since um got the eon eon <laughs> eon ian kellogg uh, cap kit in there which i don't think i don't think he does i don't think he does cap kits anymore so that's pretty cool that we got it though so that should be swapped out and hopefully that'll fix that problem but uh one thing i want to try is i want to try to do a little work on this board so take a look at this board so this pcb right here obviously it's just kind of sitting in there so we're gonna unplug it real quick and let's take a look at it so looking at this PCB looking right here at the ground I can definitely see there's been some heat there but it's not too bad the the plastic is yellowed pretty bad but the actual traces aren't bad at all those look okay um, there's been some modifications done to the board. You can see there's wires ran here and there. 
And typically they do that on Pac-Man boards, converting them to Miss Pac-Man. Uh, because this is a Miss Pac-Man machine or cabinet, but it doesn't have the, the ribbon cable and daughter card that go off to the side. So that means there's probably probably some, some, some reprogrammed code chips here and character ROMs and stuff like that in between all these chips to make it. And with, with these, that probably all hacked to be Miss Pac-Man. So we're going to go through this board real quick. We're going to do, uh, we're going to give it a good cleaning. Um, and then we'll go ahead and plug it back into the machine and see if we can't get it to play Miss Pac-Man, at least so that we can hear it. Looking at the backside too, you can see a lot of the, all the wires that have been soldered all over the place to uh, kind of hack the board. All right, so we've got the board out. Um, I went through and I cleaned the edge connector up here real good. Um, I'm going to just... Uh, Reseat the Z80, uh, which is the main circuit board. To do that, you got to pop this off, and this is the uh, the Z80 right here. Um, so I'm just going to set that off to the side. And usually I use these, but on the Z80s they're a little bit bigger. Um, so what I'll probably do is use uh, a mini flathead screwdriver to kind of loosen it up, uh, because they can be a little more challenging to get out of here with these uh, chip pullers, because they're just so wide. So I'm just going to go kind of rock it back and forth from side to side here, loosen it up because you don't want to damage the legs or anything like that. So there we go. So we got that pulled out. So looking at the Z80, I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to take a wire. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to use some uh, electronic cleaner. I'm just going to hit the, uh, just a bit. I'm just going to hit the legs with, with, with some, some of this real quick here. Then I'm going to lightly brush it with my wire brush. And that should help take off any oxidation. Let's do the other side too. You don't want to push real hard because you don't want to bend these legs. That can really damage and then you'll have to get a replacement Z80. So you don't want, you don't definitely don't want to do that. All right. Now when putting it back in, a couple things you want to do. So you want to make sure that you're not you see how this this side has a notch in it you want to make sure it's in the right direction so that um all all the chips have the notch at the bottom or facing this way so we're going to make sure we put that notch back in the same way and you want to when you're before you take it out you want to make notes to make sure it's it's you know you're removing it the way it was it was and putting it back in the way it was so now we're just going to press that back into place so now that z80 is clean um looking at this thing right here everything looks okay there won't hurt to uh, just put a little bit of stuff in the in the socket there, and then right on the legs of this here. Give it a quick brush down. Again, these, these pins are a little bit more sturdy. Uh, you can be a little more aggressive on these ones. They're quite a bit thicker. All right, let's go. Ahead. Actually, you know what? Before we put that back into place, let's look at some of the rest of these chips. So all these chips up here. And these two down here really make up the Pac-Man code. Um, are they going to hinder the game from booting up? Probably not. But while we've got it out of the game, while we've got it, our full access to it, we might as well take a look at some of these chips. So let's go ahead and just do a quick look at some of these chips and make sure things are going good. So all the legs look good on that one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to spray it down. Wait, what is this? There's a little... It's like a piece of something in that socket right there. I don't know. It was different. So all I'm doing now, just like before, I'm spraying. I'm hitting these with some contact cleaner. And then I'm going to hit them with a the wire brush. Just making sure that all the oxidation is off the legs of the chips. So you just a remind, reminder, be very careful because those legs are pretty fragile. So we're just going to go ahead and put that one back in. When you're putting them back in, make sure you got all the legs lined up where they go before you really put that pressure on. Because if you don't get one in, you can end up breaking one of those legs right off of there. All right, this one's next. Everything looks good. And, and keep in mind, guys, I am not a board repairman. I usually send my boards out to be repaired. Um, I'm just doing the basic troubleshooting. I have no idea if this is going to make any difference at all. Um, but what we can do 
is the good news about Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man boards is they are pretty well documented on the internet. So if we can't, if, if cleaning these chips and cleaning the board doesn't do anything for our cause here, we can do a little research online and maybe find the answer. Um, because like I said, this is probably one of the most documented um, circuit boards on the internet there is. So we'll definitely do a little research before we talk about replacing it or sending it out for repair or something like that. This video probably won't be released before the arcade pinball vending and coin up auction, um, at least the August one, but I might be uh, on the lookout for some, they usually they have some parts boxes there. Maybe uh, if, if things don't go well, maybe I'll be able to find some replacement Pac-Man stuff there. You never know what you'll find at the auction, guys. All right, these last two chips over here, I am not going to mess with these two. I'm not going to mess with these two because, let me see if I can show you on camera. So they've got these wires soldered directly to the legs. And the legs are actually pulled out of the sockets because I'm sure whatever trace they would go to, or that's where the wire is in place for. So we're not going to mess with that. The only other thing we're going to do... Well, we're going to put this back on since we've got it right here ready to go. But we're probably going to pull these two character ROMs. I think they are. Let me get this. Now, these ones can be a little challenging. You want to line everything up real good. Make sure, you know, I'm going to shine a little light on there so I can make sure I can see that properly. There we go. All right, that's set in place. Let's do these last two here. Like I said, these, these probably have nothing to do with our issue. Um, if I recall correctly, these are the character ROMs for the game. So what they do is they uh, determine the shape of Miss Pac-Man rather than anything to do with starting the game up. But I am definitely not a Pac-Man board expert. So I could be wrong on exactly what these chips are for. All right, I'll pull one more. All right, looking over here too, I see some, uh, let's see if you can see that on camera. I don't know if you can, but looking at the legs of some of these RAM chips over here, you see how they're, they're kind of like tarnished. Can you see that? But they're kind of like brown. Uh, right, just real quick, here's one of those RAM chips. Now, I know it's kind of tough to see, but you can see how dirty these legs are. That side's pretty bad too. So there, you can see it looks like they, it looks like there's like tar, like a brown coating on them. That's definitely not what you want, and that can hinder the game. So, so we're gonna spray some contact cleaner on there, and we'll give them a good brush down here. And again, remember you want to be careful. These are real delicate, so you want to be gentle with them, kind of. So. That's a little cleaner, right? A little more silver looking now. Try the side too. That's that's that. I think it's the worst side. I'm probably due for a new wire brush. This one's getting kind of worn out. It's a little better. All right. I'm going to finish the rest of these off camera, but I just wanted to show you all what those look like. 
All right, guys. Well, I went and did what I said not to do. I was a little aggressive cleaning uh, the legs of one of the chips. Let me show you what happened. So on four. And I just pulled the whole socket out. No, well, that wasn't right. <laughs> All right, so there's definitely going to need to be some work done on this board. Um, but luckily, we've got a whole other backup board over here that I think has issues as well. So we're going to we're going to actually going to move on from this for a moment. Um, and we're going to work on the monitor because we want to be able to see what's happening on the screen. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace this monitor chassis right here. And, you know, some of you may be a little intimidated by monitor chassis. Um, they're really not that bad. As long as you respect them and are, you're careful and you know how to short them, you're going to be okay. So we're going to go through that in just a moment here. Uh, let, me go, let me get some tools together and then we'll, uh, we'll work on disconnecting that monitor chassis, putting the new one in and seeing if it makes any difference. All right, so for educational purposes, I'm gonna go over a few things. First thing you wanna do, obviously, when you're working with your monitor, is unplug the cabinet. Got the cabinet unplugged, so now I'm sure there's no voltage running through. Um, but basically, the way a monitor works is it's kinda of like a big, giant uh, capacitor. So the tube can actually store voltage. And that's why you need to discharge a monitor. So this one probably isn't doing anything because it's completely dead. When we booted it up, there was no neck glow here in the uh, in the neck. So we're just going to go ahead and try to discharge it anyway. And just move that out of the way for now because we don't need that. And in order to discharge this monitor, I'm going to take a simple flathead screwdriver and a simple alligator clip uh, wire. I'm going to clip one end to the screwdriver like so, and the other end to the monitor frame. And then all we're going to do is with one hand, we're going to put the screwdriver underneath this anode cap here. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's see if we hear a pop. Listen for it. No, no pop. Yeah, that means this, this monitor never, never charged up. So because of that, we can just pop this thing off here. See, there's no, there's no spark or anything. If this was holding a charge, you'd see a little spark. You hear a little snap when you do that. So that's good to go. So now all we need to do is make a few disconnections and then reconnect the new one in. And for this side, I'm gonna move the camera to the other side here. Like so. And I'll explain the process to you. Uh, and some of you arcade veterans know exactly what I'm doing here. And some of you guys that are not arcade veterans don't. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen the two screws. There's gonna be one right here. Take that screw out. All right. And then there's another one on the opposite side here. And you can do these steps, whatever you in, you know, whatever steps you're, you're comfortable in doing in what order. So now that I've got those two out, the actual chassis is free to move. But what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the power cord like this. Power cord. Dis All right. So we got our power cord unplugged. I'm actually going to grab a glove. I just got an old glove here because sometimes this uh, this bag, this big capacitor can hold a charge. So I'm just going to try and unplug this without touching too much stuff uh, because these can these can bite you. Um, oh, we also need to disconnect. Well, that was already disconnected. That's not a good sign. What else? Let's disconnect the neck board. There we go. So we need to disconnect our. Those two things. So then all we need to disconnect now is our video signal here and then our yoke connector here. So I'm gonna hold that in place. There's the video signal. And the yoke connector right here can be can be kind of challenging. Kind of challenging to disconnect. There we go. Alright, so remember red to the right. All right. Let's get this old one out of the way. But before we do that, let me show you something here that sometimes can catch people off guard. So this capacitor right here, I don't know if you can see that 
this capacitor right here can still hold a charge. So let's let's see if it's holding a charge. All I'm going to do is I'm going to short it by touching the two legs together with a screwdriver. Yeah, there you go. Some fireworks. So that can still hold a charge. Hopefully we got that on camera because that was awesome. <laughs> All right, with that said, it's time to put the new one in. Or rebuilt, replacement, whatever you want to call it. So here's the new one, or re rebuilt, replacement one, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure that that capacitor is not holding a big charge. So let's, let's short it real quick here. Ready? No, it's not on the camera, is it? All right. Let's try shorting it. Okay, we're good to go. There's nothing... No charge in there, it would have popped just like the last one. So, now we can start reconnecting everything. So, now that I know that there's no charge in there, I'm going to take this glove off. Because the only reason for the glove was to protect me from shocking myself. So we're just going to kind of start putting everything back as we took it off. So we're going to start with this yoke connector. Remember we said red to the right, so we're going to put the red wire on the right, call, or on the right pin. There we go. And I'm just setting everything in place right now. All right, next I'm going to connect these pins here. These are for the degauss circuit. And the degauss circuit is what takes the, mag the magnetism out of the tube. All right, you know, while we got it right there, I'm going to throw the screws back in it so it's not walking all over the places we're trying to work. So we've got that all connected up. Next we'll put the neck board back on, but before we do that, make sure you reconnect your neck board ground. For whatever reason, that was disconnected on the last one, and that, that's not something that would stop it from working like we want it to, but it would cause problems in the end. All right, so we got that done. Next is our video signal. Let's put our video signal on next. This can be challenging to get your hands in there the right way. Got that one on. All right, got that one on. So now we've got our neckboard ground, our yoke, our degauss, our video signal. All we have left is our power cord. We already reconnected the neckboard, and we need to reconnect the, where'd it go? This guy right here, the anode cap. All right, one rule or one practice I like to do is before I reconnect the anode cap, I like to go in and make sure there's no charge built up. Now, we already tested it to make sure there wasn't one before, but we're going to test it one more time. So I'm back with my screwdriver with the alligator clip. Other end, clip to the frame. All right, no spark. All right, we don't want to zap ourselves. Okay, so let's connect the anode. And all it is, is it's just uh, it's just like a suction cup, but it's got two pins. You wanna make sure both pins are in this anode hole. So I usually start with one side, hit one side in, and I kinda of rock it and put the other side in. Once they're in, I just kinda of stick it down. So that's everything. So now we got power cord hooked up, and we should be good to go. All right, so next I'm gonna put the second board we have into the game and because since we broke the pins off of the uh, the one chip and plus it was having all those issues I'm just gonna put this board in for now to see if it does anything because we want to see what's happening on the screen if anything's happening on the screen we'll connect this board back together okay and all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close this up So 
we can see what's happening. I really need to make some room out here in the shop. I got all this crap out here. All the stuff in my way. All right, I actually turned some of the lights off so you can see what's happening. Now I'm going to plug the game back in. And let's see what happens here. I don't know, honestly, if we're going to see anything. This uh, mono chassis is untested. Okay, oh, we do got some activity. So we got some, uh, looks like some flashing sprites maybe on the board. Um, so we got some signs of life. There's obviously going to need to be some adjustments. But before we get into all that, we need to figure out what's going on with our boards. So I'm going to next start moving some parts around and we'll see if we can't get things working right. So uh, let me do some, let me do some messing. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so I've been doing a little bit of research, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Um, I was actually on Mike's Arcade's webpage and kind of going through some of the different troubleshooting steps that he's seen. And the thing that I could find that was closest to our problem was a couple random objects on the screen. Um, it, it looks like both of these same things here. Very similar problem. Um, this one said 4M video, 4M video RAM board bad. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. 4M video RAM bad. So what I did was I pulled 4M off of this and swapped it. So now the 4M from this board is now on this board. So we're going to see if that works. So let's go ahead and put this in the game. Don't mind the shop. It's literally, I'm working on like multiple things at the moment. So I apologize. So okay, let's go ahead and put this in the game. setting it in there for now all right um let me move this back up i'm going to turn off the big light and let's boot the game up let's see what happens Okay. Oh, oh, we got some. We got some life. All right. So obviously, I need to. I need to adjust the. Uh, I think that's the vertical sink um, on this. But it looks like we got a working board. Um, let's see if we can't coin it up. There we go. All right. Like I said, I know. I know. I know it's tough to see. But let me see if I can't start a game now. Hey, hey there we go. We got a Pac-Man board working. All right, now we need to fix that sink issue. So I'm gonna turn the lights back on. Okay, now this is gonna be kind of tough to show on camera, but I'm gonna use my TV adjustment tools. Um, I'm trying to think the best way to set the shot up. All right, here we go. We're all ready to make our adjustments, and all I'm going to use is this TV adjustment tool. Notice it's plastic, not metal, to make our adjustments in the back. So we've got live voltage running through the monitor, so I'm just going to do this very carefully. Um, and I don't remember which one's which. I'm just, just going to start adjusting and see what happens here. That's obviously not it. Try this next one. No, all right. It's not that one. There we go. 
Okay, now as for the picture, looks like we need some color adjustments. So let's mess with our brightness and contrast here a little bit. That's our focus. There we go. Now obviously that needs a good cleaning and it needs a degaussing as well. So let's... <laughs> Pac-Man looks yellow. Or red, I mean. Pac-Man's supposed to be yellow. Let's see if Pac-Man gets yellow as it goes up top. Nope. Definitely needs a degauss. So let's do a degaussing next. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to put this back up on its regular plane. And then I actually did a little bit of it already. So remember I was talking about how um, the CRT holds a charge. Well, it also holds a magnetic field too. I know that big light's in the way. Let me, uh, let me, let me set up a better shot for you. I'll be right back. All right, guys, now I'm, I'm going to show you the degaussing. Now, the, my brightness is obviously a little bit high because you can see the edges of the screen over here. But you see how there's like purple over here, purple back here in the corner. Um, that is all an issue when it comes to degauss. A little bit up here as well as a little discoloration. So Pac-Man looks a, a little more orangish or red than he should. He should be bright yellow. And we probably still need to make some adjustments on the actual monitor chassis. But I'm going to show you a trick. Um, this is a degauss coil. Now... I know it's ugly, I know it's not like the $40 ones you can buy online. I made this degauss coil. And it's probably not the safest um, because it heats up really fast. So basically what I've done was I've taken a degauss circuit from an old monitor that I was junking. Just take, I took that, I wired in 120 volts and uh, kind of wrapped some, some electrical tape around it to make it a nice coil. I did put um, a, a, a switch on it so I can interrupt the power because right now there's no power running through it. Um, because when you run power through it, it does heat up really fast because these were designed to be just a quick jolt of electromagnetic magnetic force. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it for about 5 or 10 seconds, see how it looks, and maybe do it another 5 or 10 seconds. And then we got to let it cool down uh, because this thing does get really warm. So all I'm going to do is press this button and just kind of wave it in front of here. And you'll watch, you'll see the, the reaction on the screen. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate these purple sections and try to make it all even. All right, ready? All right, so that purple section's gone. We still have a little bit over here in the corner. So we're going to do it one more time over here. Oh, that's even worse. Now look at that. Now we got red, we got green. That's because I didn't do a circle and pull away as I was doing it. All right, let's try that one more time. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, like I said, I know our brightness is a little high, but I wanted to be able to see the screen real well. And we probably need to make a few more adjustments, and we'll do that. But in just literally like 15 minutes worth of work, actual work, um, we have a working cocktail cabinet. Let's give it Next, I'm going to do some more monitor adjustments. I'm going to try and get that monitor looking a little bit better. Um, and then we'll start working on cleaning and making the cabinet look nicer. We've got to replace the control panel overlays on each side. And we have to probably, like I said, give it a good cleaning, maybe replace the T-molding. We'll see what happens. Um, but that's good. All right, so it's time for the next step. I, uh, I took this all apart. I gave, I gave it a good cleaning. It looks a lot better. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the control panels and getting those overlays in check. So first thing I'm going to do is turn off the game and open the machine up here. I'm just going to lean this uh, top forward like this. You want to be careful of that so you don't do any damage. But now here we got the uh, the whole inside exposed. I'm going to unplug the machine also. Just so that way there's no chance of me getting shocked or anything like that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect our control panels. And I do need to secure this as well. We'll do that in a minute. But right now let's disconnect control panels. So here's player one disconnected. Here is player two. These things can be a little tough. There we go. All right, so the next thing we need to do 
is remove these two control panels. Um, every game is a little bit different. Let's see, these ones. All right. On this one, I'm going to use a quarter inch nut driver to remove these four things. We'll probably need to remove some screws from the bottom too. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and set that right there. Pull this one out. Set it right there. We're going to remove these little lamp sockets too. So let that one hang. And we'll let that hang like that. So now we can pull this out and look how gross that is. That definitely needs a good cleaning. That's disgusting. Um, and then, let's see. Yeah, so there's two screws on the outside. Let me go ahead and pull the two screws out real quick. All right, guys, so it took some work, but I got it out. Um, and as you can see, it's still pretty cruddy. So I'm gonna give it a good wipe down first. Um, and what we need to do is we need to get the rest of that uh, old overlay off. So you can see there's still some remnants of that. So let's give it a good wipe down first. So I think what I'm going to have to do is probably get a razor blade and get the rest of that off. So let me go, let me go and do that real quick. And then we'll work on putting it back together with the new overlay on it. All right, guys, so here we go. So we got that uh, replaced. I still need to get, I, I, I got to run to the hardware store, get some little corner screws for this um, because the ones that were on there were just awful. They were, they were just so rusted out and so gross. Um, but those are all taken care of. So I've got that side taken care of there. I'm just going to put it back together over here like so. It can take just a little bit of finesse to get this just right. There's my finesse. <laughs> All right, next I need to wipe down this gross shield thing. And honestly, I probably should soak in some degreaser, but let's let's just see how how well these uh these wipes work. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was gonna take some some elbow grease for sure. Look at that. I <laughs> mean, isn't that gross? Ugh. Who would want to bring that in their house? This is probably in a bar somewhere, and this is probably years of nicotine buildup on this thing. It's just so gross. This is the kind of stuff that makes me want to go take a shower as soon as I'm done with this, because it's just so yuck. So nasty. Probably gonna have to get another wipe. Because this one's getting pretty well used up, I think. Yeah, let's get a new one. That one's that one's pretty gross. Back at it. I've got this crud all over my hand, so it's just making it kind of worse. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it back in place. like so. And I'm going to start putting it back together. Now, I'll do a final wipe down once I get it completely back together like that. So, let me find all of my things here. Right, let's 
see if we can get, if we can't get this get this right here. I think I might have lost one of these already, and that's just my luck. So all I'm doing right now is I'm going to line up these two corner pieces. Trying to. There we go. Took a minute, but we got it. All right, there we go. So I'm going to plug this back in for now. I'm going to go find. Oh, here's one of them. Ultimately, I, I can't seem to find one of these bolts. I'm sure I've got some spares somewhere, so I'll use those as I need them. In place I gotta find the other one so I'll do that um, but next I'm gonna go ahead and do this side so I'm gonna do it off camera kind of like I did this one um, but I'll, I'll show you once I get it all out and fixed and changed over I'll, I'll show you again so that's really the last step and then we kind of got a fully nice looking working game of course it still needs a good cleaning of course but we'll get that taken care of all right we'll be right back all right guys so we got it all taken care of. So if you take a look at that, we've got the new control panel overlay on that side. We've got the new control panel overlay on that side. Everything is good to go. Um, I, sorry for the lights. Let me, uh, let me try turning off the big main lights and see if that makes any difference. Uh, still kind of tough to see. I apologize for the reflections and everything. I'll turn the main light back on. But this game is done, guys. So all we did was we had to do, let's see, we had to replace the monitor chassis. That was able to, to get the monitor back up and running so we could see kind of what was happening on the screen. From there, we determined what the problem with the board was by using the Mike's Arcade uh, troubleshooting page, which really helped us out. So Mike Halland out there, if you're watching, thanks so much for, <laughs> for all the great resources. Check out Mike'sArcade.com for any of you out there that are looking for Nintendo parts or fix information on troubleshooting on different problems like like the one we had tonight so with that said we got all everything up and running everything's working we can replace the control panel overlays all i need to do is buy some small tiny screws to put in the corners of the control panel overlays where those holes are um, i don't have any of those on hand so i'm gonna have to go to the hardware store for that but we're calling this project done it wasn't a full restore it was just to get it up and running and playable um which we've done so with that said let's uh let's give it a quick one more quick gameplay And again, I apologize for the reflection. Let me see if I can't do something with that real quick here. All right. So I know it's I know it's dark. All you can see is the screen. Let me coin up the game real quick. And actually, that's going to reset the uh, the game because I've got the kill, the kill switch is going to be enabled. So let me just open it up here. Let me pull the switch back out. Gonna boot up real quick. There we go. I'll coin it up. And let's give it a gameplay. Oh, he got me. <laughs> I'm not good at, uh, at Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man. Um, I'm better with the fast version for sure. Huh. 
Oh, I am terrible. I'm even worse on the cocktail version because you got to hunch over it. Power pellet ended right there. And game over. All right, guys, once again, let's take one more look at the cabinet. As you can see, it's a 1980, well, it's actually, it's a, it's a Miss Pac-Man cocktail. It's got a Pac-Man board in it uh, because that, those were the ROMs we had on hand for this board. So with that said, guys, um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We've got all kinds of great things coming your way. We've got more vending collection videos, all kinds of arcade stuff coming your way, auctions, all, you know, everything we do on this channel. So hopefully you're a fan. If so, please subscribe, show us your support, give us a thumbs up and share our videos. We appreciate everyone's um, patience and everyone's support and showing all, all the love to the channel. We do thank you so much for that. So guys, one more time, this is Mount with the Galaxy Games 843. Check out this Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man cocktail, ready to go. And we'll see you next time. There's the 408. And don't forget to like me on my channel and like and subscribe. All right, here we go with the next one. 102 1. You bump it about here. You bump it about. It just went off. And Close the that'll door. happen. Close the door. Close the door. Oh, the door came open. There it is. There it comes. And we're going to get here. And 100 now, 200 now, 200 now, 300 now, 300 now, 400 now, 500 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 